Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and I'm doing another video of Moon Moose Quest Paradox RPG Catalyst Chapter. I did get one question I want to answer here. Asking if I use Cheat Engine in order to get my stats up. The fact is I do not use Cheat Engine to manipulate my character stats. You can see here in my save file in the lower right the playtime I have on my game. That is 3,800 hours, or in excess of two entire weeks of playtime. No, 20 entire weeks of playtime. I didn't do all of that with my eyes on the screen. I have a bot for that, but the fact of the matter, this is all legally valid. So what I'm doing today is the four post-game bosses. The first one here is Nanabi, but let's talk about what I'm doing. I'm not using my super characters, whom you can see down here. I'm using Luca, Ilya, Sonia, and Lime. And they're all basically just run up to the maximum level in all their... their character level, their class levels, and their race levels. Obviously I've had this saved for a very long time. I may have used some seeds on some of them. Luca, in particular. But their stats are nothing out of the ordinary for characters at the end of, of this game. But I want to talk about what I equip them with short, a bit. An important thing I have on all of my characters is this Lamian crown. You can make it with the the synthesis system somewhere. But the useful thing is it make in makes you invulnerable to a certain status effect that the Sphinx will be attempting to use on me. Other things important, Dogma Robe is, the Dogma Robe is another synthesis item you can make I believe in the last synthesis town. I have one on Elias because it increases her magic regeneration. This Holy Ring is also a magic regeneration. In the regular game you can get one from Elias if you get her affection for you high enough, but the ones I have I mostly got in the Labyrinth of Chaos. I'm specifically trying to avoid using any of those items, Labyrinth of Chaos items, for this video because I want this to be something you can do just straight out of the end game. All you have to do is level up your characters. Leveling up all the classes and races will take quite a while, but you don't have to go into the Labyrinth in order to do anything that I'm doing here. Other important stuff. This darkness ring will in increase Sonia's SP every turn. And nothing special for Lime, aside from the Lamian crown, which all four of my characters have. Now, abilities are important. Luca and Sonia are going to be my two damage dealers. And their damage looks like. and their damage abilities look like this. None of them are particularly good. The job skills I put on Luca aren't important. Now the magic skills, these are important. That first one I have on all four of my characters. That allows you to use the summon skill no matter what job and class you happen to... class and race you happen to have on your character at any given time. You're going to want that. The second one is the Flame Booster. I'm going to be using Flame Attacks with Luca, so that will add a boost to his attack power. And here are the defensive skills. These are also important. In particular, this first one. You could say, Grit Your Teeth. This allows you to survive a hit that would normally kill you, as long as you had at least 30% of your life before the hit came in. So, no one hit kills while you have that. No, I don't need that anymore. Now this last one is Avoid Instant Death, which will make instant death attacks miss half of the time. This is useful in the very last boss because she has a lot of instant death attacks and she may get one out before I put instant death immunity on all of my characters. This one, if you can afford it, this will revive your character if they get killed once. 
and special skills. Most of that is Luke is Luke is one of my throwaway characters because I can't get rid of him, and I hope that I always put him in the back ranks. But for this battle, I added this last ability, which increases his SP by an 10% per turn. SP regeneration is important for doing lots of damage because without SP you're stuck with regular attacks and regular attacks are, to put it frankly, crap. Elise's reds and blues aren't important. But again, she has equip scum. The summon makes you use the summon use. So she can use summons. Other magic abilities, because she is the one who is in charge of summoning. Actually, most of these abilities aren't useful anymore. Well, anyway. I do have an MP maximum booster, so that she gets more MP back from her magic MP regen. And this reduces the MP cost of anything I do. It reduces the cost for the primary carbuncle, the primary summon she does, from 12 to 9 MP. Anyway. She also has Kuishibari, so that if she's hit, she survives no matter how much life she has. She has regenerations. Oh, an important thing. I put on Hind on my two support characters so they don't get killed early on. And I put a peel on Luca and Sonia, so if anybody gets killed in the first round, it'll be those two and not the people I really need surviving. Hmm. I thought I equipped this. This is medicine knowledge, too. If, in the rare case, that Elias actually starts running out of mana, she'll need to get more mana. And these two abilities will let her use the base ether, which normally restores 30 magic points, to restore 180 magic points, as long as she uses it on herself. Other people using it on her will get 90, but She'll have enough turns to use it anyway. Sonia here is my secondary damage dealer. And she looks a lot like the rest. Summoning is added in. Also the MP reduction, although we are not going to be using that. Kuishibari, letting you take a hit even if you're going even if you normally wouldn't. And SP regeneration. Appeal, that last one here makes her more likely to be targeted than my support characters. And Lime, my second support character. Not important in the reds or the blues. Again, summon ability, and again Kuishibari here. Some regenerations and hind to keep people from targeting her. Now the skills. I like to put at the top thief skills because I'm always stealing in my regular game, although I won't do it in this video. Next, special skills. There's a stealing skill in there. But what Luca and Sonia will be using are Henshin, which you get from the Seigi no Hero class, which allows you to get a huge stat boost for five turns. And this one here. I actually can't pronounce that, but for three turns it makes you deal much more damage and always get critical hits, but it costs some health, as you can see from the red cost. The summons are very important. This one here is Carbuncle, which puts Reflect on all of your characters, but it only lasts for two turns. Iria, Ilias is actually devoted to using that and every other turn, because it's so important. And the second important summon is here. Migawari Kurara. This pops up a wall in front of your character that lets your character take no damage for three direct attacks. There is a downside in that enemies that get a lot of attacks will penetrate through it before you can recast it. But I cast it a lot. Ah, yes. Luca has another skill he uses. Once I'm in 
transformed and have the health cost power up, I will be using this skill, his most powerful, in the hero techniques. Elias will basically only be using summons. Sonia's the way I'll be using Sonia is the same as with you, Luca. I do a transform and then this thing, which gives me attack bonus and 100% crit. And then she comes down to her club techniques and I use this most expensive one. Now Lime is very important, although she's not putting down Reflect like Elias will be. Once she's protected by her wall, I'm going to be using X item with Boost Drink, Phoenix Tail, and the Kitsuke Kasuri. The important one for the later bosses will be Phoenix Tails. When used in the X item, like this, it makes you immune to Instant Death, Nirvana, and Climax. Three status effects, so to speak, that will instantly kill you. This one will also make will make you immune to confusion and sleep, and the second boss uses confusion from time to time, so... Actually, no, the second and fourth bosses both use confusion from time to time, so I'm going to throw that in Lime's rotation. And this one, the boost drink, will give all your party members SP regeneration. Stacked on top of the SP regeneration I have in their abilities. And that's basically the sum of this.